so thanks everyone for being here today. Once again, I'm Davud. I'm postdoc uh, flow at UBC. When we did this work, I was a PhD student at Concordia. I, I work under the supervision of Dr. Nicola Santelis. And for this work, we collaborated closely with uh, researchers from uh, Oregon State University, Amaya Ketkar and Danny Dick. Danny Dick is here, Amaya Ketkar is here virtually. Um, <clears throat> hmm? Yeah, so this is the logo of Haskell. Haskell is one of the purely functional programs is out there and if you look at this logo you can easily distinguish this lambda character in the in the logo and I guess this is because lambda expressions are construct for purely functional programming languages such as uh, Haskell, Elm but the, they've also been adopted in many multi parallel programming languages such as C++, C Sharp and JavaScript and we've waited so long to have lambda expressions in Java. Uh, in all those purely uh, uh, functional programming languages uh, lambda expressions are in the form of anonymous functions that uh, they're first class citizens basically. You can pass them to functions, you can re return them from functions, but in Java, lambda expressions replace anonymous classes that implement simple, uh, single abstract method interfaces. Uh, under the hood, they're different, they're not exactly the same. I don't have the time to talk about the differences here, but uh, they give you the same functionality, more or less. Um, let's take a look, a quick look at a um, lambda expression in Java. Let's say you have this interface and you want to implement uh, the, the, the single method that you have in this interface. Let's assume that you don't have uh, the method that actually uh, tells you whether a string is empty or not. So you can implement it using an anonymous class, right? So we're not doing something magic here, we're just returning a Boolean expression that uh, compares the string uh, with the uh, empty string basically. But note here that this is a single abstract method because it only has one uh, abstract method. Uh, they're also called functional interfaces in Java A terminology and you can, if you want, you can add this annotation uh, to your interface. And then you can implement it using a lambda expression. As you see, this lambda expression is doing the same thing as the, uh, uh, as the anonymous class, um, but you can see that it's much shorter. It's taking the string and then it's returning the Boolean expression doing the same thing. Uh, Java provides 43 built-in functional interfaces for you, such as these. One of them is function tr, which means that you are creating a lambda expression that accepts something with type t and returns something with type r. Out of this 43, 36 are a specialized type of functional interfaces into double functions. So this is a lambda expression that you basically take an int and return a double. Uh, it was, a, it was a cold evening in Montreal. I was talking to my friend Amea, and then we, we ended up seeing something like that in one of the, one of the projects uh, that we were analyzing. So this is, this is a simple lambda expression. It was taking an int, I've, I've oversimplified this, of course. So it's taking an int, and then return, which it returns a double because this C is a constant, uh, a double constant, basically. And then we found that this was bound to this. Uh, interface, function, integer, and double. The developer could use int to double function instead, right? Uh, the, there's a difference here. The difference here is that if you use the first one, when you evaluate the lambda expression, this is the method that you, you will be calling, right? So you, you return double with the wrapper class, and then you, you accept the integer again. You use this one, then everything is primitive, right? So if you pass that lambda expression, uh, you're force, forcing the auto boxing. Whereas if you use this this other one, you basically can avoid auto boxing. And this this was the moment that we understood that um, we we okay we have some uh, tool support for lambda expressions. For instance, uh, you can uh, uh, refactor your anonymous classes to use lambda expressions or the way around. But we don't. What we do not have is let's say tool support for this kind of uh, thing that tells you 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 you're misusing let's say a functional interface. But we understood that what we do not have is basically the knowledge how developers take advantage of lambda expression. What features of lambda expression are used, when they're used, why they're used. Um, and this information, this knowledge is, is necessary because it can drive researchers, industry, language designers to build uh, upon um, basically right um, assumptions. And also developers to make the best use of lambda expressions. <clears throat> so we came up with a study with these research questions, what features of lambdas are used, when they're used, who uses them most, how they're used, and why they're used. Um, I do not have to, to uh, I do not have the time to talk about all of them, so I'll focus only on, on part of them. Uh, you are invited to, to read the paper for the rest. 
So we designed a study uh, having information coming from three different sources. So first we uh, gathered 2,000 uh, top Java projects from GitHub and then we parsed them to their ASTs and then we understood that only 241 Java projects started using Lambda expressions. And we also collected some information about this. Uh, so this accounted for more than 100,000 Lambda expressions. Uh, we collected different information for each Lambda expression. So let's say number of uh, uh, parameters for each, each Lambda expression. Where in the code they're used. What is the parent node in their ASTs. And then out of those 241, we actually built 147 projects out of them. Uh, you know that building is a, uh, a painful task. That's why only a subset of the projects were built. And this was important because we wanted to g gain more information about the binding of each of these Lambda expressions, right? And so this accounted for more than, uh, so about 60,000 Lambda expressions. And then we mined the history of these projects to get insights about the trends in creating Lambda expressions in the, in the projects. When you mine uh, projects, one of the things that could happen to you is that there's a lot of noise. For instance, if you refactor code, if you move a method from somewhere to somewhere, uh, the, the Lambda expression, which is being moved as well, will show, show up for you as a new Lambda expression. But we only wanted to study the newly added Lambda expression in the code to, to find the patterns or the trends. Uh, that's why we use a tool that basically understands the refactoring throughout the history to remove the noise. <clears throat> And then we did firehouse interviews. So we emailed 351 developers right after they created Lambda expressions in it. So we monitored the, the, the projects, and then right after they created the Lambda expression, we emailed them. And then 97 responded. So this is a very high response rate. Um, and we asked them in the, in the email why they created Lambda expressions, uh, how they created them, what was it automatic or manually, and then what ID they, they were using. And then we did this qualitative analysis with open coding and uh, thematic analysis and everything. So having information coming from three different sources, of course, it gives you this opportunity to try for the results. So I will show you some of the results that we found. Uh, so research question one, what features of Lambda such as these ones. And they're bound to specialized type functional interfaces like these. And we actually understood that 20% of the time, the developer was using this generic type functional interfaces instead of the specialized type. So the hypothesis was correct that developers are under um, uh, specialized type functional interfaces. So the implication here is that, first of all, we have to teach developers that there's a long list of uh, functional interfaces in Java that they can uh, take advantage of. And maybe they need better tools. Actually, my, my friend Amea is creating a tool that takes this, uh, the uses of this uh, functional interface and wherever possible, it automatically factors the code uh, to, this, uh, to use this functional um, interface. Um, and actually, we're sending patches to many different projects, uh, Cassandra, um, SonarQube, and they're getting accepted, actually. So, and developers are really love the kind of refactoring that you're using, uh, you're doing, because uh, basically uh, this avoids auto-boxing, which has performance over. <clears throat> so what happens to 57% of the Lambda expressions which are bound to custom functional interface? You can write your own custom functional interface instead of using a built-in. But we said that we have 43 built-in functional interfaces. What's happening? Why developers are not using those built-in ones? We found that 10% of the time, developers uh, needed more than two parameters in the single abstract method that they're calling with the lambda expression. If you're a functional person, you could say, oh, I have high arity, uh, I could use currying to, to take care of it, right? So let's say you have this lambda expression, you can, you can make a chain of functions that basically uh, you can change the, the arity from two to one, let's say. But if you want to make this, this thing happen in Java, the type of the, uh, the lambda expression that you're creating will look like something like this. So this is a function that accepts an integer and returns another function that accepts an integer uh, and returns another integer for you. So this is too verbose, right? Um, I know some people hate Java for this, actually. 20% uh, of the people needed to uh, handle exceptions. So there is no way, there's like none of the um, um, uh, uh, built-in functional interfaces in Java allow you to handle checked exceptions. So developers needed to check to, to handle checked exceptions. They had to create a custom functional interface only for uh, accepting, uh, uh, sorry, for handling exceptions. <clears throat> 
if you want to use annotations for your single abstract method, if you want to have default methods in your abstract method, uh, in your uh, interface, if you want to have better name for your abstract method that you're calling or the, or the custom functional interface, you have to create a custom functional interface basically. So the implication here is, is that again, Java is verbose. We, we knew that even before, but uh, in, in, in case of Lambda expressions, it can, it can go very uh, crazy, I would say. Exception handling may, maybe was something that really needed when we came to. 90% uh, of the time, Lambda expressions were passed as parameters. Uh, so imagine that we have these two methods that uh, they share some code, as we call them clones, uh, and let's say you want to refactor this, this piece of code, what you can do is you can use a lambda, right? You can make a, another function that has all the repeated parts, and for the parts that are different, you can pass lambda expressions for the behavior that you want to parameterize. So behavior parameterization was one of the, um, uh, let's say, uh, one of the things that developers use lambdas for mostly. <clears throat> and we actually found that 60% of the time, lambda expressions were used in test code. In test code, we know that we have more duplication um, uh, compared to production code. Um, implication here is that uh, using lambda expressions is a valid way to el eliminate uh, clones or code duplication. In our previous work in XC 2017, we actually showed that there's a lot of duplication that you can get rid of only using lambda expressions. Um, and we found basically more clones in test because test has a lot of duplicated code. Uh, most of the time you have lots of steps that are just repeated. Uh, how do developers introduce lambdas? Uh, so you can introduce a lambda expression in existing code or you can introduce a lambda expression in new code. We found that developers sometimes do massive migrations in, in their code. Right, so these are the lambda expressions that are introduced in um, existing code. So for instance, in one, one commit, we found that uh, there were 5,000 lambda expressions being introduced. When we manually investigated the code, we found that uh, there were all refactorings from anonymous class to lambda expressions. And this was the IntelliJ IDEA community version. <clears throat> Loops to streams. This is not a very good uh, refactoring actually, but some people uh, take their traditional code and they refactor it to use a stream API in Java. So a stream API basically allows you to do all uh, these things that you can do with traditional loops using Lambda expressions. Uh, map, filter, all those things that you have uh, for granted in functional programming. <coughs> clone refactoring was one of the things that we understood. People uh, take their code and they refactor clones using Lambda expressions. I just showed one example of it. And there are other reasons that we found why de uh, developers create Lambda expressions in existing code. We actually found that uh, when we asked developers how you create Lambda expressions, 89% said that we create them uh, not using any tool. And the only tool developers used to create Lambda expressions uh, automatically was IntelliJ. And this was not surprising. This is uh, basically supporting even our previous work. <clears throat> So here is call for research again. What is the problem with current tools in dealing with Lambda expressions? People are not using them or underusing them when they're creating Lambda expressions. And basically this research can lead to a better tool. So this is the last research questions that we asked from developers. <clears throat> Why they created Lambda expressions? 8% of the time people said that we use Lambda expressions as important. So it's not surprising, but two developers actually said that lambdas are less readable than, than uh, anonymous uh, classes. So when you look at, so this is one of the developers, uh, this is what one of the developers said. So when you look at anonymous classes, such as this one, you can get a lot of information. For instance, you can get, you can see all these uh, annotations associated with the sim single abstract method that you're calling, right? So this gives you hint, for instance, that this thing is not supposed to return a null or something like that. And then you can see the type of the method that you're calling, the return type of the method that you're calling, the name of the method that you're calling, the, the, the type of the input parameters of the method that you're calling. So all these give you some hint what you can do with the input and what you can do with the output and what you can expect from this uh, um, anonymous class to do. Whereas if you make something like that, which basically this happened in the code. When you look at this lambda expression, you can get basically none of those. If you have good 
uh, tool support, maybe it, it will tell you that, okay, uh, the, the, the type that you're returning, I know that, the type that you're accepting, um, I know that, but nothing else. 27% um, of the time, developers said that we, we don't want to create new classes only for uh, simple things, right? I, I don't want to create classes because classes have meaning for you. So I create Lambda expressions instead of creating class, classes, explicit classes. <clears throat> Reusability again. 21% uh, of the time, developers said that I wanted to reuse some part of code and parameterize the behavior, so I created uh, a Lambda expression. 7% of the time, and this is interesting, people said that we are uh, creating uh, design patterns using Lambda expressions. Uh, when, you use Lambda, when you use design patterns, uh, there's a lot of, uh, most of the time you have to create uh, inheritance hierarchies in your code, right? Uh, Lambda expressions might uh, actually allow you to avoid creating inheritance hierarchies in your code. And developers actually said that we want to avoid that. We want to use Lambda expressions instead of creating inheritance hierarchies. And there are other, uh, other uh, many other reasons that you can study the paper uh, to find more about. Uh, <clears throat> the, implement, uh, the implication here is that uh, maybe we can re rethink some of our previous knowledge, uh, let's say in terms of uh, design patterns that we all know, right? Uh, maybe we can teach the students that maybe they can use the lambda expressions instead of making uh, uh, inheritance hierarchies, right? And the other thing is that uh, we need to improve our tool support so that when, you, when we look at the lambda expression like this, we gain more understanding of what's, what's happening. Uh, to conclude, <clears throat> these are some of the uh, maybe more surprising findings here. Uh, only 12% 12, 12 of the top GitHub projects, Java projects, uh, are using Lambda expressions. Um, I know that one of the questions would be why they're not using Lambda expressions. I don't know the answer. So built-in functional interfaces are underused. This is another uh, finding of this research. Tool support, of course, is not mature, and we also maybe we need to rethink many other things that we've uh, taught students so far, uh, including the OO design patterns. Uh, by looking at how developers are using Lambda expressions, uh, we might find even more interesting uh, uses of Lambda expressions. <clears throat> so uh, the artifacts and data for this study have been evaluated by the Artifact Evaluation Committee, and we took extra care to curate data and tools for you, and we invite you to, to, to take advantage of the tool and the data set. To, for your own research. You can check out uh, the data and the tool on my webpage. Thank you very much. <laughs>